not grow weary and they will walk and not faint. We thank you, Lord, as we wait on you, Lord. We thank you for the breath of God. We thank you, Lord, for the breath of the Spirit of God breathing into dry bones, Lord, to refresh and renew and strengthen and anoint. And we just say, Lord, we love you. We want to be ready for you, Lord, in the hour we live in. Lord, I know everyone here is on track with this message that we want to be made ready, Lord, and to hasten your second coming by readiness. And uh, we just say, God, we, we just say, do a work in us. We know, like, like Terry was saying from Zechariah, that it is not by power, it is not by might, but it is by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And so, Lord, we are asking you tonight, Lord, we are empty. We can't do it in our own strength, Lord. What, what you're uh, doing in this hour cannot be done by human hands, Lord. It's the Lord's building. It's the bride who the Lord makes ready himself. I know we have a role, but, Lord, we are asking you tonight, Lord, tomorrow, um, we're asking you to do a deep work in us, Lord. Those who would listen online, God, the hour is late. God, the, the nations are in, a, in an uproar. You have a controversy with the nations, and the, the leaders of the nations, Lord, have a, are conspiring against you, Lord, like it says in Psalms chapter 2. Lord, the hour is very late. Yes. And, Lord, our prayer is that, Lord, we would be the people that, is, that are necessary, Lord, for that remnant to be formed so the bride can be made ready. And all that's required, Lord, all that is required in the readiness process, Lord, that is revealed in the book of Revelation. Father, we are asking you, Lord, what, to do what we cannot do. We yes. just simply cannot do it. We desire it, and even where we don't desire it, we pray you would give us the desire we need to want it the way you want it, Lord. I pray that, that you would help us tonight to want this the way you want this, Lord. We, and even in our weak flesh, Lord, where we think we want it, but we really don't want it fully like you want us to have it. I pray that you would just do a work of the Holy Spirit to give us desire. Lord, that we would be a Maranatha generation. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Lord, we would be a people, God, who would, the Spirit and the bride would say, come, Lord Jesus. Lord, that we would be so uh, hungry for you, so desperate for the Lord Jesus himself, that we would say, the Spirit and the bride say, come, Lord Jesus. Maranatha. We, Lord, let there be a Maranatha cry from our hearts, Lord, that truly longs for your coming and your return and all that that means in the disruption of our lives. Lord, bring us into that union with the Spirit. We just say, Holy Spirit. We just ask you, Father, let your Spirit minister to our hearts right now in this area. That we would come into union with you, Holy Spirit, in fullness. Lord, where you are the one move the spirit and the bride say come let us be in that union that will be required like it says in revelation 22 17 of the spirit and the bride saying come lord that we would be in that union with you that full union without any hindrance frustration disruption distraction without any other uh focus without lord i think i josiah mentioned this the the, the singular of focus, the singular of vision. Lord, I pray that you would give us that vision for the Lord's return and the opportunity that we have and the invitation you're extending to this generation to be the generation that would hasten his second coming. Lord, let us not fail in that assignment. Let us not fail in that opportunity Lord, I think even what Leonard Ravenhill said is the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized in the lifetime of the opportunity. Lord, let us seize this moment, Lord, in this hour we live in. Lord, where we are weak in our flesh, I pray that you would make us strong, Lord. 
Lord, where we are distracted, where we are desire other things, I pray that you, by a work of the Spirit of God, would come deep within all of us, me included, and Lord, you would just make us desire Jesus the way his bride should desire him, with passion and first love and fire, God, that you would burn the lukewarmness out of us, you would burn the indifference out of us, you would burn the apathy out of us, Lord. And that the fire of the spirit of the living God would burn inside of us, Lord. We would have, Song of Solomon 8, 6, many, the, the, the fire of God that is stronger than death and the jealousy of your love that burns away every other, uh, every other love and every other idol, Lord. Would you set our hearts on fire, Lord, we pray. Just agree with the Lord right now. Just agree. Just say, yes, Lord. Do this work in us. This is not just do this work in me. It is that. Do this work in me, but it's do this work in us. We go forward together. <laughs> this is a corporate move of the Holy Spirit. This is a corporate move of the Holy Spirit. It can't be just one person. It is a corporate move of the Holy Spirit. What God is doing in this hour is a corporate move. It has to be together. So, Lord, we just say, God, just grab a hold of us and shift us and move us forward in you by the Spirit of God with no looking back. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, worship team, for leading us into the presence of the Lord. And Terry, you can go ahead and come on up. And so it's been a great conference so far. I just feel like it's going to even get better. So we just uh, excited for what Terry will be bringing to us today. And I uh, have to confess, uh, I, I brought him and Michael and Randall out of the Holy of Holies to watch the tail end of uh, Georgia Tech beating Florida State, and so hopefully that doesn't disrupt your anointing, but I don't think it will. <laughs> no, if it had been Tennessee, it would have. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to be back together with you guys. The Lord is good, isn't he? Yeah. I like that declaration, sister, and it was really good tonight, really good. This is a time for declaration, don't you think? I mean, not just half-hearted whatever, I'm being, but a real declaration of God's people. Uh, not only being echoed as we were singing, but Brian, again, there, there's a time for declaration to where we understand the moment and what God is actually doing in us and in his people and desires to do. And uh, I've never heard that quote of Leonard Ravenhill, but it's a great quote. Seize the moment. Let me just say it this way too. There is a people coming out to God that won't let this generation pass without the Lord coming. I aim to be a part. Because you can be. You're invited to be. Since we have a major part in that coming, readiness, that's been the delay factor is the lack of readiness, then we can kick that to the curb and go all the way, don't you think? I remember in some of the encounters with God the Father, I mentioned a little bit of it, but uh, he went right at this issue, you know, the fact of why his son had not returned, being a bride not make, making herself ready in the first century when the Lord wanted to return. <laughs> he brought it up to me later, he said, you know what the difference was between now and then? He said, you had the apostles and prophets back then. And he said, they were the right ones too. He said, the difference, he said, was that the people didn't believe the message anymore. And he said, he leaned forward, looked me in the eye and said, don't make that same mistake. What do you think about that? Oh, that don't matter. Really? It matters to God. It should matter to us. It was a mistake, and they were battling it, the apostles and prophets of the New Testament. Read the epistles. They were battling fleshly people who no longer wanted to go all the way with the Lord. Let's not make the same mistake twice. That should not be what he's called us out unto. You agree? <laughs> Nothing like opening up with a bullet between the eyes. Huh? He's like, okay, this isn't just for some of us. It's for all of us. 
across the globe. There's a people now coming out. You understand that's what God's waited on? We got this all wrong. God's not set some random date out here that he's coming. It was always concerning the people being made ready. And when that people made themselves ready, the Lord's coming for them. Then there can be a wedding. God doesn't do random, not ever. He's not random, right? Well, anyway, let's get into the scriptures. <laughs> Enough of that, but I, I want to encourage us. I, I, you know, places I go, <clears throat> wherever that might be, <laughs> but I appreciate being able to come here and flow with Brian and Ken and the, you guys and Josiah and Isaac and I and really express the Lord's heart in this moment and let it be an encouragement to one another, don't you think? Guys, we get so little encouragement. There is a real, and I'm not talking about some fictitious fantasy. I mean a real encouragement. Go all the way. Don't give up. Right? Isn't that right, guys? It's so true. So, so I said I was going to look at uh, Revelation 21 more tonight, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So Revelation chapter 21. Don't you uh, love the book of Revelation? Snuck that one in on you, didn't I? <laughs> Revelation 21, we're going to read some more of it. Started this morning. I want us to think as we look at these passages, it's what, what is, isn't this the right question? What is the outcome of a move of God when it's God and he gets what he wants? And that's what's in this passage. I think it's too much doubt involved, too much Again, human factor of, well, we really don't know what it is. That's because we've never been there. But we should know what it is because it's recorded. When God gets what he wants, he talks about it right here. This is what it's going to end up as. Don't you think? We don't have to stumble around in the dark questioning it. Right? So let's look at it again in Revelation 21 with that in view. Uh, again, <clears throat> verse number 2, And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem. Um, now, guys, understand the new Jerusalem was what God was wanting the whole time. This is him finally getting what he wanted. Right? It's a city that man didn't build. The Lord did. And we're it. <laughs> a royal priesthood. A holy nation. A people of God's own choosing. And they are that city, therefore God unashamedly gives them a city to reflect his glory even more. And to honor them who followed him all the way, Jonathan. All the way. Isn't that beautiful of God? He doesn't forget those who go all the way with him. One thing about God, he doesn't have memory loss. <laughs> you know it? <laughs> Good thing, huh? I've never had God ask me, now what's your name? <laughs> Pudding tank. It's a Barney Five-ism. <laughs> I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Isn't that beautiful? Made ready as a bride, adorned for her husband. Now we're looking at final things. We're looking at something God has accomplished. We could see it, by the way. Let me point this out in the Old Testament in the books of uh, Ezra and Nehemiah. We included the threefold coming out of a people out of Babylon and the Babylonian system that had been conquered by Persia, and they were able to return from Babylon, and they came out to the Lord. And what did that result in? The coming of the Lord the first time. We clear on that? That's what it resulted in. Believe you me when I say this, that the Lord's repeating the, the pattern, Drew, with the same intent, isn't he, brother? He aims to come. That's why I'm mentioning it. That pattern there in Nehemiah and Ezra, 
This is a rubble coming out, the government of God laying the foundation. This Ezra coming out, rebuilding the house of God. This Nehemiah coming out, building the wall around the city of God resulted in the coming of the Lord. That was the last major move of God in the Old Testament before the coming of Jesus Christ. Hello? Can we see the pattern? There's a pattern, isn't there, Brian? Now, God being God, we're going to stick to the pattern, the principle. So I don't have to guess and say, well, I don't know where this is going to end. I know exactly where it will end if God gets his way. How about you? If it ended in his coming the first time, he has every plan, and if we'll cooperate with it ending in his coming this time. Now, try and get some kind of a spiritual goose bump out of that one somewhere. Even a hallelujah will do. <laughs> Anybody say hallelujah? hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. God's been waiting on this. How many generations of God's people have missed it? And now we live in the moment of it if we want it. I want it. Me too, brother. I'm not saying no. I've got more I want to do on this earth. <laughs> Be it done unto us according to your will. That's my request. How about you? Anyway, so this is what we're seeing here. We're seeing the end result of a move of God. And we're seeing it again here at the end. It's a repeat of the pattern of former times. But I'm not talking about outward things. I'm talking about an inward work of in the people of God. Then it was an outward work meant to affect the people. Now it's an inward work meant to affect the world. It's the bringing of the heavenly that is Christ by the Spirit in full measuredness into this world. It's becoming bridal, so there can be a wedding. Notice it in verse 3, and I heard a loud voice from the throne. Do we understand? Do I understand the significance of that statement? There was a loud voice, Randall, from the throne. That's incredible, isn't it? Who's talking? God's talking. What's he talking about? Well, here it is. Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he shall dwell among them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be among them. Now, that's everything we could see in the threefold work of the Holy Spirit of God in bringing Zerubbabel, Joshua, Ezra, and Nehemiah out so that God could have a people and he would be in the midst of them amongst the nations. And they would be different from all the other nations, which they were meant to be from the beginning. And it was only their cry, we want to be like the other nations, we want a king, when they rejected their king and God gave them Saul. And it led to Babylon. Saul will lead you to Babylon. You don't have Saul here. You have Brian. <laughs> And please let me. <laughs> That's good, brother. The young folks are back there. <laughs> oh, that's rich. We need a camera pointed that way to get that. <laughs> young people are with us. <laughs> By the way, young people, I'm going to say this to you from the Lord. The, uh, the Lord, this has been prayers going up. I don't know from who all, from you guys, from others, but uh, the Lord is coming among you young people. And it's going to be beautiful. Now, that's an answer to somebody's prayer. It ain't just somebody. I could name your names. I don't know naturally. I know spiritually. I'm telling you, the Lord's coming among the young people. And there's going to be a fruit that remains called life forevermore. <laughs> that's the real fruit God's after. You know it? You're not going to lead the way, but you're going to support those who lead the way. Right? Amen, guys? Be encouraged. I love young people. I was once a young person. <laughs> Two days after dirt was invented. <laughs> I was young. <laughs> was, that, was that good, brother? <laughs> it's getting there. Keep working. All right. 
So God's excitement in this can be seen. Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men. God's excited about being among us. I wonder if we're excited about having him among us. I mean, man, guys, I mean, tough crowd tonight. I mean, come on. I mean, come on. We're talking about the Almighty dwelling in us and among us. You know, not just singly, corporately. And that being forever. No end. Come on, get a spiritual finger twitch. I can feel the electricity starting to move. <laughs> and so <laughs> there's not going to, he's going to wipe away every tear, it says in verse 4, from their eyes. There shall be no longer any death. How many can say amen to that? Amen. Your body is going to be new and you're not going to grow old. I mean, you can say amen to that. Amen. I knew I'd get a response out of the old folks. <laughs> yeah. Woo. <laughs> That's better than yoga. <laughs> I'm joking about that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> he shall dwell among them. They shall be his people. Notice this. It makes me, I'm just saying, I can't hardly read these passages without crying that God would want that. Notice this cry. They shall be his people. God himself shall be among them. Notice that. No more crying. Verse 4. The first things have passed away. I hope that doesn't include steaks. <laughs> Barbecue. <laughs> if it does, I would suggest that you eat all the meat you can. Before, behold, the millennium comes. <laughs> Wait about that, Larry. <laughs> Man, the priesthood were meat eaters. Y'all know that, right? They weren't vegetarians. The Lord made them eat the meat. I knew I was born to be a priest. <laughs> what about you, Bryce? <laughs> yes. You better eat that lamb. Yes, sir. <laughs> Anyway, and he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I'm making all things new. And he said, Right, for these words are faithful and true. Seems almost like a fantasy to read this, but it isn't. Coming to a theater near you, <laughs> the truth, the way, the life, Jesus, returning King of kings and Lord of lords. Astounding. And he said to me, it is done. When we hear that, I don't know what I plan to do. I guess I'll have to wait to the moment of it. But it won't be a spiritual finger twitch, I can guarantee you that. <laughs> I think we're going to all fly up to meet him in the air and forever be with the Lord and come right back down. God, I hope it's not Van Leer, Tennessee. <laughs> and Terry... I give you reigning power over Van Leer. <laughs> wouldn't you know? <laughs> I wouldn't exactly call that a top 10 vacation spot in the world. <laughs> People want out of Van Leer, not in it. <laughs> I've often wondered if God knows where Van Leer is. <laughs> or if he cares. <laughs> Obviously. It is done. I'm the Alpha and Omega. You know, I, I put this out. It's on the website. You can look at it if you haven't already. But uh, in January, the Lord appeared to me as the Omega Man, he called himself. Referred to himself as the Omega Man. He said, I'm the Lion, the Omega Man. I believed him. He went on to say a whole lot of other stuff concerning this time we're in and the coming of the Lord. They made a movie about him. Charlton Heston played God again. <laughs> he played Moses. He played in a lot of these movies, right? I mean, he knew that. Charlton Heston was in a movie called The Omega Man. I mean, he knew he was in one called Moses or whatever, The Ten Commandments. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> no, The Omega Man, the Lord referred to. But he's the real, the Lord's the real one. He's the Alpha and he's the coming Omega Man. 
Anyway, he was talking about that, and there were other saints involved and things being said. Well, so he who overcomes, verse 7, shall inherit these things. That's how it begins that with the church, chapter 2 and 3. That phrase keeps coming to the church of Jesus Christ, he who overcomes. God trying to get the attention of his people, he who overcomes. The promises come to the overcomers, not to those that Josiah brought out who this is following, who are cowardly, but to the overcomers. He who overcomes shall inherit these things, and I will be his God. He will be my son. But for the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, we have a real problem with unbelief now, don't we, guys? I mean, we're being encouraged to not believe in the coming of the Lord. Oh, I've heard that before. Of course you have. So have I. What's different? The Lord. He triggers it, not us in the sense of we make ourselves ready, but his voice triggers the process. He was always going to be the one that broke the seals. Nobody else. Right? And you understand that's never been said before? Nobody's ever taken that book out of God the Father's hand. That angel protecting that book never allowed anybody near it. but the right person. I have seen it. I've watched it. It's not a maybe. It's a fact. And we're in the time of it now. How then shall we live? Don't you think? So instead of unbelief, let the Lord get a hold of us, bring us to where our ears are capable of hearing what the Spirit says, right? He who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. So I brought something up about this this morning. Who's your instructor? Who's instructing you? Well, I know who's instructing you here. They're instructing you correctly, but there are instructors in this world who are instructing people with lies they are voices of not God. They are voices of deception and delusion. Not preparing a bride. Telling a people it's already happened. It works against God's plan. And what do you think God thinks about that? I can tell you it's right here. Well, God's okay with that. He will never be. Blood will be on their hands. You understand? Right? This is no joke. And this is not a time to be blind and deaf. It's time to be awakened. It's not a time to bring yourself under the judgment of God by teaching what's false. It is time to hear the Lord. Right? Don't you think, guys? Just because it's been so much delay didn't mean that it would never happen. And now the great amount of mocking that's going on is among God's people. They're doing the mocking. And they're fulfilling Scripture when they do it. It's one thing if we're just making up invented stories. It's another thing if we've stood in the counsel of the Lord, watched it and heard it and seen it. I have. Or I wouldn't be saying what I'm saying. And this news breaks hard on a church that loves itself, loves its flesh. And I'll tell you how much God loves it. He's using the media of Babylon now to judge the church. We know that, right? He is using the media of Babylon to judge the church. And then he's going to turn around and use uh, 
the media of Babylon as his footstool for going directions that are not the truth. The judgments of God have begun in the house of God. Can we see it? Do we understand it? And can we know that it's not over? Over three years ago, the Lord appeared right in front of me in my living room. And calling out ministries to me, spoke directly about the fall of ministries. Some have already happened. He was angry. He said, I told you I wanted things to be small. His eyes flashing fire. What do you say to that? You listen. This is before recent events, but recent events proved it. You understand what I mean? This ain't random. It's specific. And more is coming. And not long in coming. I say that with the fear of the Lord. How about you? It is a time to humble ourselves. It is a time to be clean. It is a time to walk it and live it, not talk it. It is time that we do go wholeheartedly after the Lord. And we abandon this callousness, this hardness that has grown up in the body of Christ to where God can't break through and talk to us about our sin. To where God can't talk to us, you have no wall. You have no separation between you and the profane. Between what's righteous and what's wicked, you have no wall. And so God's coming out among us. Can you hear him? To build the wall, Randall. We understand why now, right? Look what's happening. He's telling us there's a wall to be built of separation, a demarcation line, a wall between sanctification. And don't, please, hear what I'm about to tell you. Do not allow your association with ministries to ruin your sanctification. Isn't that right, Michael? Well, so-and-so, I don't care about so-and-so. It's Christ I got my eyes on. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not following people. I'm following the Lord. And I'll tell you where he's leading, to himself. And anything that's not leading to him, get away from it. Don't support it. Flee. And get back out to Christ. Now, I ain't said a lot about this, but I am now. Because I know what's in front of us here. And it's going to be ugly, my friends. But not because of the Lord. But because leaders won't humble themselves. And he'll do it for them then. We have a choice. We can humble ourselves before the Lord or he'll do it. Isn't that right, Drew? That's right, isn't it, Michael? Don't you think, Bethany? And if God does it, it's ugly. <laughs> That's a quote off the Lion King animated movie. <laughs> I know that's intense, but please understand what I'm trying to... I'm trying to say something to the people of God before it happens. Don't lose your faith. Regain it in Christ. Put it back where it began. The author and finisher is Jesus, Patricia and Bryce, isn't he? Who's the author and finisher of our faith? Jesus and nobody else. Nobody. Is that not true? I keep my eyes set on him. That's not being insensitive to what's around me, but I'm not, there's a wall and I'm not part of it, and I don't aim to be. Too much hiddenness going on. Great sin is being revealed in the church and more is coming, including a more homosexuality. I warn you about it. And I'm not kidding. Perversions that we didn't think would be possible in the house of God. And I'm talking about in the prophetic movement. Anyway, Terry, stop. All right, maybe I should go longer. We've been quite duped. We think giftedness is a replacement for holiness. We're dead wrong. We think somebody who has a gift must be holy. Seldom has that been the case. 
Look at Samson. He didn't even know when the Spirit of God had departed from him. And most of these people now don't either. You can grieve God and grieve God until he departs. Well, young people, don't let it be a part of your lives. Don't follow the path of the church. Follow Jesus and honor your leaders because you've got some good ones here. Is that not right, guys? Honor them. God will honor you. I appreciate men of integrity, men of honesty, men of purity, men who are not making a name for themselves. God sees to it that they don't get a name except the slurs. <laughs> I've been called a lot of names. <laughs> None are worth mentioning. <laughs> of course, my attitude about it is this. I've been called worse by better people. <laughs> Y'all want to use that one, right? <laughs> I got a really good attitude about it. <laughs> Heard that before. <laughs> Didn't faze me. No, those who are coming out to the Lord who are not successful as the church sees it don't carry any weight, any weight in modernism. But that's about to change, brother. Jeremiah labored all those years and never had a single convert. Did you know that? Not a single one. There goes your American dream. <laughs> had a good friend of mine tell me, I've effectively pastored this church from 150 down to 75. I said, good for you. <laughs> He's a part of our church now. I brought, him, I brought him in to do a seminar on church leadership. No, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Explain to me how you did that. This is intense. I might as well do it this way, huh? Too intense. <laughs> All right, we better go on, don't you think? I think we were looking for something. I'm just not sure it got lost in the shuffle. I don't believe. Anyway, let's head, let's head on. Let's look at this fully, a little bit more. So, um, come. This is uh, coming to verse 9. And one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and spoke with me, saying, Come here. I shall show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. Now, I don't want to pass over this. The bride is the wife of the lamb. That tells us something, that there's no way you're getting out of suffering. That's what it tells you. What do you think, Robert? What do you think, Judy? Right in our face. You want to be like Jesus? Now, don't go looking for it. Just live it. It'll find you. <laughs> Please don't go looking for suffering. God knows where you live. If you're not suffering, get married. <laughs> Have children. <laughs> Pastor a church. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm not kidding. <laughs> What do you think, Todd and Michelle? This was not the high heavenly calling I had in mind. <laughs> I thought the world was bad at calling me my names, but the church has got it down pat. <laughs> anyway, so it's the uh, bride of the lamb. It's critical that we understand what we're looking at here. We're seeing the result of the sufferings of Christ in a people. All kidding aside, that's what we're looking at. We're seeing the result of the sufferings of Christ in a people, Michael. Isn't that beautiful? There's a bride made ready. She can be joined to the lamb because in the Greek here, the lambkin nature is in her. She is of the lamb. And that's not some doctrine. That is proven by the fire. Carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain 
There's a city set on a hill for sure. What does that mean? God is elevating that which has come fully out to him. She is his bride. He showed me, here it is, the holy city. Don't you think that the holy city is inhabited by a holy people? Didn't that go without saying, Larry? Isn't that true, sister? The holy city, in fact, as we read on, we'll, we'll see it, can only be inhabited by a holy people. What kind of holiness you're talking about? Holiness that comes from the refinement of fire, of suffering of pain, of tests and trials and tribulations. Hello? Let's face the fact. Two years of ease hasn't made us, 2,000 years of ease hasn't made us ready. Maybe a few years of suffering will. <laughs> God thinks so. He trusts, listen to me, lovingly so, the Lord trusts you that you won't abandon him because you go through something difficult and that your faith will be proven through adversity, not shattered. Hello? How many want your faith to be proven? There's a test. It's called adversity. It's called the tribulation. It's called difficulties, difficult times. While Job's friends are saying you sin. God's saying to Job, don't listen. <laughs> because their concept is, surely God wouldn't do this to someone he loves. Think about those three guys. They've never been through anything. If you're going to make a statement like that, they've never been through anything, Todd. How many believe that after God took Job through the, his time frame, he set his sights on the other three. <laughs> In fact, he tells them, you better go let Job pray for you. Listen to this, or I'm not going to forgive you. What? Yeah. <laughs> you know that scoundrel you've been calling that said he's been sinning and I've been punishing him? You need to go bow yourself and ask him to pray for you or I'm not forgiving you. Hello? Hello? Anybody going through anything out there? I got good news for you. There's another one right around the corner, so you can get ready. <laughs> I should ask the right question. Is there anybody out there that's going through nothing? No hands. Great. <clears throat> anybody out there looking for some tests and trials, talk to me afterwards and I'll lead you in the right direction. <laughs> All right, so it's a holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven. It's not coming up out of the earth. It's not from this earth. It's not of the earth. Finally, God has prepared something that's completely the Lord. We're it. And this city is a reflection of what God has done in us. And we, as life in it, reflect the glory of the Lamb to the entire universe. And this planet will be freed from its gravitational pull around the sun. And will go twisting and serving out into the universe so that that city may be seen by the whole creation. God aims to have a testimony. Well, say that again. <laughs> a rocket powered earth. <laughs> We've only got a human view, God's got an eternal one. A universal view. God's doing a testimony not for the sake of people only. He's doing a testimony in a people for the sake of the universe. Which is filled with beings that we know nothing of. But we will. You will be sent. Hello. First the vessel. Then the eternal mission of the Godhead. To the creation. Bring them out of their immaturity, bride of the Lamb. 
What a plan. He thought it was about Walmart. <laughs> Where does it say that? The book of Ephesians, the whole book's about it. This isn't a fantasy. Paul's the only apostle that ever talked in the New Testament about the body of Christ. Did you know that? He's the only apostle the body of Christ was ever revealed to. And the whole body of Christ, the house of God is for God. The body of Christ is for the universe. Anyway, let me go on. So we're seeing a new beginning about to, co to come about here after the millennium. After the millennium, the rest of the eternal mission of the Godhead, no more delay, is begun. Christ seen through his people to the universe. That through, here it is, Ephesians 3, that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God will be made known to the heavenly rulers and authorities. That's not angels being spoken of there. Hello? Unfallen beings who's been foretold our coming to them. Created by God, immature in their state with him, needing the bride to lead them into a place of what Ephesians 3 says, we bow our knees, Paul said, before the Father who is in heaven from which every family in heaven and in earth, you catch that? Bow their knees before the Father through whom every family in heaven and earth derives its name. This is a family work of God to the entire universe. And we've made it small, insignificant. I'm only trying to wake us up a little bit. I hope I'm helping you to realize the real plan of God begins here. It never ends. It has no end. Once a member, always a member, my friends. Amen. I love, what do you think about that, Brian? That'll, that'll get us out of the dust real quick, won't it? <laughs> All right, let's go on. Oh, Y'all like that, did you? <laughs> it's been made small. The devil's hidden it. We're it. This is all there is to it. It's a lie. And the book of Ephesians uncovers the lie. Well, anyway, so let's see <clears throat> what we're going to see then. Here's a city that has the glory of God. Her brilliance is like a very costly stone. So I want to skip around a little bit to draw in some things here so we can see this testimony, this wall about the city that has 12 foundation stones. That's a 12-fold manifestation of the one apostle, Jesus Christ, the high priest of our faith. It's a full measure testimony of Christ. As is seen in Revelation chapter 7, 12 times 12, 12 times 12,000, 12 to the thousandth degree is a full measured testimony of Jesus, finally in a vessel, which is absolutely a necessity if the mission to the rest of the creation is to be inaugurated. First, the vessel, God makes it ready then through the vessel to the universe. We've made the gospel so small. Anyway, names of the 12 apostles here, we see it again, of the Lamb. What's that say? These apostles have known suffering and pain. It's not 12 being seen here. It's a full measure of Christ being seen in a vessel that numbers more than 12. Numbers more than 144,000. And the one who spoke with me had a gold measuring rod to measure the city, and he measures the city. As you can see here, in these verses. <clears throat> and it describes what we're seeing describes the stones, descri describes the gates, 
All of that that is scribed. But let's get to verse 22. And I saw no temple in it. For the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb are its temple. Uh, hear what's being said here. The Lamb is the temple. See, what Josiah has been saying, what we've been trying to convey is not heresy. Those who suffer with him will reign with him. To the overcomers comes the promises and no one else. The lamb is the temple. The city has no need of the sun or the moon to shine upon it for the glory of God has illumined it and its lamp is who? The lamb. The suffering lamb illuminates the city, Drew. Isn't that amazing? Church has got it backwards, don't we? We're, we need power. We need the nature of the Lamb. The city is, the whole city's purpose is to show the Lamb. That's what I'm trying to bring to us, that offering. The city, the saints, that vessel reflects the Lamb. The nations shall walk by the light of what? The glory of the Lamb. The kings of the earth shall bring their glory into it. And in the daytime, <clears throat> and in the daytime, for there shall not be a night there, its gates shall never be closed. And they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. Verse 27, and nothing unclean, and no one who practices abomination. Lying. Shall ever come into it. But only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. <clears throat> well, I want to look at a few more scriptures. And these aren't proof texts. I'm already convinced, aren't you? <laughs> I tell you what, guys. Jesus is going to have a vessel that is married to him. That he is who they want. He does it for them. They're not looking for earthly things to keep them going, Michael. They're in love with the heavenly man the Lord Jesus Christ. Their hearts belong to him and not another. Now let's weigh that over against all this nonsense going on in the present day scenario to all the filth and the uncleanness and the impurity and the abominations of it all to where we have brought reproach upon the name of the Lord because of our sin. Because of you, the nations blaspheme God. That's what he said to the Jews. Because of you, my name is blasphemed among the nations. What's he saying to the church? Because of you, how you live. I do not think that should be, nor can it be, the testimony of Jesus. How about you? There has got to be a wall. They overcame him by the word of their testimony, by not loving their lives unto death, and by the blood of the Lamb. Is that not right? The word of the testimony. God's going to have a testimony that's in purity of his son. Not impure, not darkness, but pure, unadulterated, unstained, untainted light. The nations are going to walk by that light. That's how pure that light's going to be. I can feel it rising in the room. Shut up, Terry, and let's pray. <laughs> Give me a chance to repent. We will, because we need to. Right? I may be blind, just not that blind. 
Let me stoke the fires a little bit more. <laughs> let's, let's just, like sinners in the hands of an angry God, shut up, Jonathan Edwards. <laughs> and he didn't, he didn't have no fire in him. He just stood up there and read it. <laughs> and to think I was proud when you learned to read. Well, how's God going to do it? Well, let's look at it here a second, okay? Josiah hit it last night a little bit in Isaiah 31. <clears throat> I like getting, you like this, Bryce, Nacho Libre. Let's get to the nitty gritty. <laughs> let's, let's get to the nitty gritty in this, right? Anybody say Nacho Libre? Get <laughs> to Let's get to the nitty gritty. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 31. Josiah was getting to the nitty gritty last night in this. Here's how the Lord's going to work this in the tribulation time that we're speaking about right now. So, verse number 9, Isaiah 31 and this rock will pass away because of panic. And his princes will be terrified at the standard. Let's finish the verse. Declares the Lord whose fire is in Zion. And whose furnace is in Jerusalem. Now I want you to turn to Isaiah chapter 4. I'm going to lay it out really clearly here from the scriptures as to what God is about and has already commenced and inaugurated doing in his people. And just because we've had it, heard it preached and not seen it lived, did y'all hear that? Just because we've heard it preached and not seen it lived, go, don't give up hope. There's going to be a people, you being that people, who live it. And it will be said of them because they live it. Isaiah chapter 4. For seven women will take hold of one man. Forget that verse. <laughs> All that means is there's going to be a fight. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Humor's going to get be the death of me one of these days. You know? <laughs> but that's what it says. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> in that day, saying, we will, eat, <clears throat> we will eat our own bread and wear our own clothes. What? <laughs> oh, anyway. So only let us be called by your name. Take away our reproach. Here it is in verse 2. In that day, the branch of the Lord will be beautiful and glor uh, uh, glorious. You believe that? Yeah. You believe the branch is the Lord himself. And there's coming a day when the Lord, Bryce, when the Lord is going to be beautiful again amongst his people. Can you say amen to that, brother? Isn't this what this is all about, the Lord getting his way? What's church about if it's not the Lord having a people? Right? So here it is. Be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth will be the pride and the adornment of the survivors of Israel. And it will come about that he who is left in Zion and remains in Jerusalem will be called holy. Y'all read that, right? Be called holy. You believe it? About time, <laughs> don't, we, don't you think? Somebody, somebody got it right finally. Somebody decided God's holy and decided Christ in you means you'll be holy too. It's not be holy because I'm holy. Go knock yourself out and do your best. It means this. If God is in you and he's holy, then what's being expressed is holy. Right. And so it's a lie to say God is in me and, and God's holy, but I'm living unholy. Right. You're lying to yourself. Hello? Yeah. Just thought I'd point that out. The Lord's not saying, hey, you need to be like me and be holy. The Lord's saying, I need in you so I can make you holy. Isn't that right? Because you ain't ever going to be holy without me. <laughs> so while the church is crying out, get us out of here, the Lord's crying out, let me in. <laughs> get me out, get me out, let me in, let me in. <laughs> Might as well have fun with it. It's the truth. 
that he will come about, he will come about that he was left in Zion and remains in Jerusalem will be called holy and everyone who is recorded for life in Jerusalem. And when the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, what a beautiful statement. That's all of us, right? Washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and purged the bloodshed of Jerusalem from her midst. How will he do it? We've been saying this for several years. Now we're going to enter into it. Don't you think, Brian? I know this. you preached this before. Everybody knew it was a lie then, but now it's going to actually be true. <laughs> that was true then. It'll be true now. It just takes the people who believe it, right, and come into alignment with it, who let the Lord get his way in them. That needs to be all of us, right? So the Lord's going to do it by the spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning. And what does that mean? That means tests. That means trials. That means tribulation. That means a Job time upon the church. That means the tribulation time with his God's people going through it. And it's called the spirit of burning as well. It is the Malachi 3 to where he purifies the sons of Levi. He purifies the priesthood to get at the people. And now we have an impure leadership, impure priesthood leading the people into the ditch they're in. And I'm telling you, the Lord's done with it. And the Lord has now moved in, this is right, Michael, the spirit of judgment. And God's in his house again with the whip driving out all that is not holy. Amen. 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 The Lord said it to me years ago. He began his ministry by going into the temple, picking up the whip, overturning the tables, and driving things out. It happened twice. He did it at the end of his ministry as well. And he spoke right to me. He said Acts was the driving out. The final chapter of Acts with us is the last driving out. What do you think about that, Larry? Amen, brother. <laughs> so, then, this is beautiful, don't you think, guys? Then the Lord will create over the whole area of Mount Zion. You only have to read Hebrews 12 to see the Zion he's talking about. Right? Hebrews 12. We've not come to Mount Sinai. We've come to Mount Zion. Right? Haven't we? Hello? Over the whole area of Mount Zion and over her assemblies, a cloud by day, even smoke, and the brightness of the flaming fire by night. For over all the glory will be a canopy. And there will be a shelter to give shade from the heat by day and refuge and protection from the storm and the rain. God is intervening amongst the people of God with the spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning. He is coming among the leadership first. Judgment begins in the house of God. Amen. He's coming among the leadership. They are being weighed in the balance. And it's much more like Thyatira concerning Jezebel. And I gave her time to repent, and she would not. Therefore. See what the Lord does? The Greek word there for time is very clear. There's a beginning to the time. There's an ending in the time. And if you don't repent in that time, he's going to kill your offspring. That ministry you started, he'll scatter it. Hello? Is this too straightforward? What do you think, Scott? Needs to be said, right? I'm saying it. 
Just because I'm saying it doesn't mean that's the only thing that needs to be said about it, but I'm saying it. You want to know what the Lord's doing? He's in his house like a, fr like a furnace, like a fire in judgment in the leadership. And believe me when I say this, if he's going to begin in the leadership, he's going to come right straight to all of us. He may start with Brian, but he'll end up with you. Isn't that right, Brian? You know what I'm saying. He may start with Terry. He'll end up with Josiah. It'll be a real short thing with me, but for Josiah, it'll take a while. <laughs> If he doesn't, if he gets to Josiah, the tribulation is going to have to go on a little bit longer. <laughs> Just think, Larry, he's preaching in the morning. It's going to be bad on me, brother. <laughs> this is what happens when you're the last one preaching, and I'm not. In the morning, revenge will be sweet. <laughs> I love my son. He loves me. We show that <clears throat> so often by our negativity towards one another. <laughs> I keep telling people what I lack in kindness, I make up by the gift of sarcasm. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so we've gone so long, and I'm pointing it out. How many can see now that well, I've, I've talked to a lot of friends of mine who have been hearing the Lord as well. I know that you guys hear the Lord. We've crossed over and transitioned. Somewhere around July, we have transitioned. What do you mean by that, Terry? We've been transitioning. We were transitioned when the seal was broke. We transitioned when the second seal was broke. Another seal is going to be broke. When? I'm not telling. I'm not talking. I'm not talking. The more you're asking, the more I'm balking. <laughs> the Lord's talking. We have transitioned. And in the transition, what once was coming has come. I'm pointing it out. The spirit of judgment is in the house of God. Spirit of burning is burning in the house of God. Can you feel the flames? God using Babylon's media to judge his house. Israel didn't think that God could use Babylon to judge them, did they? And Ezekiel knew better and prophesied it very clearly. A sword, a sword of the Lord is coming. The sword of Babylon. Revelation, out of his mouth comes a two-edged sword, the sword of the Lord back in action in the church. Hello? Uh, Terry, I'm starting to fear the Lord. Good. <laughs> He's going to push it to terror. Not to run away from him, but to humble ourselves. We're going to know not just the fear of the Lord. We're going, and I've experienced this, we're going to know the terror of the Lord. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. He is not like us. And we've misportrayed him. Lord... Go deep in this. Me, us, all of us are in this same thing together, guys. We need the Lord. Do you agree? We need the Lord. Young people, we need the Lord. How about y'all? We need the Lord. You know it. We know it. We older folks need the Lord. You younger folks, we need the Lord. We're all in the same boat in this. We need the Lord. Let's not resist him. Let's not, act, let's not fake it. Let's not live a lie. I refuse to let Revelation, the end of Revelation, play out. Let those who are evil remain evil. What? God's done. He's been grieved. He's not like that. That's what you think. And you think wrong.
When God arises, he scatters his enemy, even if they be in the church. He's not just toppling the kingdoms of the nations. He's toppling the kingdoms of ministries. And he's already started and said he would do it. Y'all still breathing out there? <laughs> what are you after, Terry? I'm after what God's after. A people made holy by him. A people who are holy in. Totally his. Not playing games. There's a wall. I'm not of that. And not because I'm better than, but because of Christ in me. And the one in you, the Christ in you, makes me not a part of that. And I can see through the deception. Can you? Well, so I'm going to finish up. I read Isaiah chapter 4. I'm going to finish up a little bit here, Malachi chapter 3. I'll finish up and you'll be finished too. <laughs> so will I. I wish everything was as it was meant to be so that such a message would not have to be shared. But such a message has to be shared because things are so far away from what God meant for them to be. And so Jeremiah 9 kicks right in, Michael. What shall I do with them? Talking about the people of God. I have refined them. And the refining goes on. And so God was calling out to Israel, come back to me. You've hewn out these cisterns for yourselves, but come back to me. And you know the condition, right, guys? You've read it recently, right? But they would not listen. They would not listen. And so God then tells Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, one of the few listening to the Lord. Most everybody else wasn't listening. All the other prophets were saying that prosperity was coming. Jeremiah was saying that Babylon was coming. They loved the prosperity message. They hated Jeremiah's message. Which one played out? So Jeremiah sang to them, return to the Lord. But they wouldn't listen. So God turns and tells Jeremiah, chapter 15, though Moses and Samuel were to stand before me, my heart would not turn to this people. Get them out of my sight. I called and they would not listen. Now they will call and I will not listen. Hello? We don't know who we're dealing with. He's not like us. Ezekiel, same thing. If Job, if Noah, if Daniel were to stand before me, they would only be able to save themselves and not this people. How many know that the church is right there now? God help us. If there's ever been a time to repent, it's now. Don't you think, Michael? It's gone way too long. And we've tolerated what we should have never tolerated in our own hearts. For God to say such things, you have to really push God to that point. He don't go there easy. You know that, right? But he's there. And I'm telling you, he's there. Where's a joke when you need it? <laughs> this is intense, isn't it, brother? It's like, Lord Jesus. Israel didn't have the responsibility we do. They did not see what we've experienced and what we've seen and what we've heard. So... We come to Malachi, that last book of the Bible, but during the time of Nehemiah, 
God's dealing with the leaders. Go figure. Malachi chapter 2, he says so. I made a covenant with Levi, a covenant of life and peace. But they forsook me, right? Malachi chapter 2. You know what your Bible says? <laughs> made a covenant, verse 5, chapter 2. My covenant with him was one of life and peace, and I gave them to him as an object of reverence. So he revered me, and he stood in awe of my name. Where in the world has that gone to in the church? Where's the fear of God? Where's the terror of the Almighty? Here in Malachi, twice in a few verses, God's referencing the fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of wisdom. I'm not talking about run away from him. I'm talking about running to him. We've been running away. Get to him. Get to him. <laughs> Amen. This isn't meant to just be a good sermon. It's meant to get us into a position to where we avert this kind of stuff with ourselves, to where we're part of a bridal people coming out to the Lord, not a part of a rejected people who would not come out. Right? Church has become a game in this nation, full of prestige, a haunt of devils beginning in the pulpit. Anyway, God made a covenant with Levi, who was the instructor of the people. You read it. The messenger of God, the instructor of the people, Levi, the Levites. They were refusing to come out to him out of Babylon. You tell me that's not happening now. Leaders are in Babylon and they don't want to hear a message like this because they love Babylon. And they're Babylonian and they're too busy making a ministry name for themselves. And they're in love with ministry, not the Lord. They've left their first love and they're in love with ministry. The Lord's uh, two-edged sword out of his mouth comes to Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2. You do this, this, this right but you've left your first love and none of that matters. Is that not true? That's true, isn't it, Todd? Isn't it, Michelle? Who's kidding who here? Who are we hiding things from, right? You think we can hide from God? What would be wisdom in this? Humble ourselves before, the God, before God Almighty. Humble ourselves. He gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. Well, anyway, so God comes with what we call chapter 3 of Malachi. It's all one book. There are no chapters in the original. They didn't exist. So God begins to move among the Levites. This, again, is a principle and a pattern of what God does first. Behold, I'm going to send my messenger. That's what Levi was supposed to be to God, a messenger. It says so in chapter 2. Now God's saying to the Levites, I'm going to send you a messenger, Levites. Since you won't be my messenger, I'm going to send you one. And he does. His name's John the Baptist. And now he's sending, is this not right, Brian? A John the Baptist apostolic vessel straight to the Levites of our day. Is that not right? Tell me that's not the pattern of God. God the Father, 1990, or not, excuse me, 2000 and whatever it was, 21. Yeah, 2021, look out mountain. God the Father calling to me about this vessel. This John the Baptist apostolic vessel, he said. Give me the vessel and I will finish this thing. My son will come. There's no way to mishear that when the whole throne was shaking. I was shaking. Everybody around that throne was shaking but God. You don't miss here. You're in terror of the Almighty. What you hear, you never forget. 
He is holy. Everybody near him knows it. Amen? So he sends the messenger to prepare the way for him. Right, Brian? And that what's going on now? Prepare the way. How do we prepare the way? Tell the Levites you're in sin. And I've got just the solution. The spirit of burning. I'm going to expose you. Who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? That's where I started this morning. Divine order to his appearing. <clears throat> For he is like, what, Michael? A refiner's fire, right? And a fuller's soap. And anybody who tells you otherwise is selling you something. Oh, he understands it's okay. Keep your sin. Don't listen, my friends. Don't listen. It's a lie. Do not allow your associations, even friendships, to ruin your sanctification. Before God you stand or you fall. He will sit as a smelter and a purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi. Isn't that what it says? And refine them like gold and silver uh, so that they may present to the Lord offerings in righteousness. Right? Isn't that what it says? So, <clears throat> verse 16, then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. Turn to your neighbor and said, let's have a talk. <laughs> let's have a talk. I'm getting out to the Lord. How about you? I'm going after the Lord. How about you? Let's go after the Lord together. Right after this message, I know of a good milkshake place. <laughs> I don't, but if you do, where you lead, I'll follow, and where there's food, I'll swallow. <laughs> Leave it to Terry to insert milkshakes into it, since I love them. My wife loves ice cream, but I like the creamy milkshake. Anyway, enough of that. There's going to be enough fire to turn that ice cream into milkshake. <laughs> Oh, behold, he's coming in fire. Just hold your ice cream out. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord gave attention and heard it. And the book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord. Notice that. In this one verse, fear the Lord's in it twice. How many believe that could be important? <laughs> he could mean what he says. Right? And who esteem his name. They will not bring reproach upon the name of the Lord. The fear of the Lord keeps us from bringing reproach upon the name of the Lord. Don't you think, Jerry? The fear of the Lord, a baptism in the fear of the Lord will have us knowing the holiness of God. Not frivolity. Not living a lie. And the Lord has something to say back to them. It's quite beautiful, Bryce, isn't it? They will be mine. You go back and look what God said about Levi. I spared the firstborn in Egypt. And they had a number. They had to count them. How many were spared that should have died in Egypt? But because of the blood of the lamb, they were spared. And God had them count the number. You go back and read it. Count the number of them. And then he makes the statement, I take Levi as mine. They shall be mine. 
There's like 240-something people difference between the Levites and the number of the ones spared at the first board in Egypt, and God makes them pay a ransom for the difference. What do you think about that, Michael? Hello? What are you saying, Terry? What do you think I'm saying? <laughs> God's serious about possession of a vessel. He's looking for a vessel. A vessel that is his messenger, Brian. A messenger of the covenant. A vessel that he can make a covenant of Christ with of life and peace. And you will be my messenger to my people. That's the meaning of Daniel 11 and 12. The instructors of the people were the Levites. Paul comes at it in the New Testament and he's going to say, you have many instructors in Christ, but you have few fathers. And I became a father to you in the faith. And you're treating me this way. Right? To the Corinthians? Amen. I just thought I'd point that out to us. You shall be mine, says the Lord. I remember God the Father on the throne, 2021 at Lookout Mountain. Quoted this to me, Michael. Quoted this verse. Everything's shaking. I'm shaking uncontrollably. You shall be mine. I said back to the Father, that's, that's all I ever wanted to be. How about you? I'm living for this nonsense. I'm ready to get out of it. You shall be my possession. Because if we'll be that to him, he's got something to tell us. And we need to hear it very clearly since we're going through the tribulation period now. We're not going to. We already are. It's just going to get worse. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. That's the imagery of the firstborn being spared. The blood of the lamb is upon this vessel. And God is going to spare the vessel. Hello? Can you say amen that to that, Randall? Amen. Is that not beautiful? You know, as the old saying goes in the south, the acorn does not fall too far from the tree. Well, the same Lord who protected Levi because of the covenant will protect you too. Amen, amen Michael? Amen. What's the answer? Shrink back? Oh, I can't go through the tribulation. No, here's what we used to do. Here's what me and my two brothers would do when my dad was, it wasn't a spanking, it was a whipping. <laughs> there is a difference. <laughs> there's two things, there's two ways you can go about this thing. You can do the dance around your daddy as he whips on you. Those blows land wherever they, they land, right? Sometimes it's way more painful. Or you can grab your daddy's legs and hang on for dear life. Ah! Don't hit me no more. <laughs> They're too young to know what I'm saying. <laughs> Anybody ever had a switch whipping? Anybody want another one? <laughs> Golly. <laughs> you became the sacrificial lamb in a switch whipping. Some of you not old enough to remember those, right, Larry? <laughs> and I'm glad you don't. But some of us in this room remember whip, which I never got whipped a single time I didn't deserve it. And boy, did my daddy miss a lot of fine opportunities. If he'd only known what we three boys were doing, breaking windows at the schoolhouse and all kinds of goodies. <laughs> Lie our way out of it. <laughs> we only threw rocks at the windows of the teacher's classes we hated. I wasn't raised a Christian. I'm like, come on. I was a heathen. What am I supposed to do? Sin was my life. <laughs> Sinners don't sin because they choose to sin. Sinners sin because they're born. <laughs> I was born. <laughs> anyway, what do you think, brother? Was that <laughs> you need to be like my wife. It's getting deep. It's getting deep, Terry. Stop, stop. Okay. I am stopping, actually. <laughs> so, let's get it and uh, let's sum up. 
Let's sum up here. God's getting out a vessel, a leadership vessel, worth their salt. They actually live it. I get letters. I get emails from people. Got a letter recently from someone confused. I followed this ministry. I followed this person. And now they're all in sin. Who can I trust? Jesus. <laughs> Fix your eyes on Jesus. He's the author and finisher. Isn't that right, guys? I didn't, that wasn't no trite answer. That's the way it is. Right? God's doing anything in the midst of exposure. He's getting our eyes back on Jesus. But for God, it could be us. We're not gloating, we're humbling ourselves. And had they humbled themselves, they wouldn't be through going through what they're going through. So what do we do? Oh, I knew it all along. No, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. Make sure you're not next. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Just think, guys. You have a nice conference, and then I come and spoil the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting a vessel out a leadership vessel that's a purified vessel right it's a refined vessel it's been purged it's gone through judgment it's been refined Michael and the Lord is coming through that vessel shining as the truth and the way and the life in a way that there's never been on the earth before that's final things. And that bridal vessel, it's Ezekiel kicking in, will show the house that God wants to the house. Follow me as I follow Christ. Come out with me. Embrace the Lord. Don't run. You can't hide. Embrace the Lord. Now, guys, it bodes well for you folks. Brian's still here. He's not running and hiding. <laughs> Which means... <laughs> no, no, I know these guys. They live it. They don't just talk it. You're blessed. But that which lives, it's not uh, promoted the way the world promotes. It's demoted by the world, but promoted by God in testimony. Not money. Not clothes. That's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that, Robert? That was just too good to pass along. <laughs> As if I have room to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you hear what I'm saying just because somebody can wear fancy clothes and get up there and act like a baboon <laughs> doesn't mean they're holy it has nothing to do with their attire it has to do with the inward man <laughs> if I wasn't wanting to see a baboon I'd go to the zoo which pretty much is what you're going to <laughs> Scott really thought that was a funny <laughs> They're about to die over here. They're going to go back and spread the word. They're at the get from the gathering. They're going to go back and spread the word to the gathering. He called y'all baboons. <laughs> but I'm going to tell him, but not to your face. I did it behind your back like y'all do me. <laughs> oh, that's way too real. <laughs> you were thinking it, Bethany. You know I just voiced it. <laughs> Drew's over there. Somebody shut this guy up. He's been way too truthful. Can't you lie a little bit or something? <laughs> All right, guys. So we end with this. The fear of the Lord is going to be your treasure in this time and God's. Is that not right, Michael? The fear of the Lord will be a treasure. And his treasured ones will fear him. And the day that he makes up his testimony, the fear of the Lord is going to lead the way. 
They don't bring reproach. Isn't that beautiful, Bryce? They don't bring reproach to the name of the Lord. What do you think, Rince? That is beautiful, isn't it, brother? The glory of the Lord shines, Ken, and the human vessel is covered by that glory. The human vessel is not lifted up. The Lord is lifted up. Amen. I want you just right where you're at. Don't stand. And there's a reason for this, but just put your hand on your heart for a second. God knows our hearts. And if they're desperately wicked, he knows that too. <laughs> but they don't have to stay that way. They may be that way, but they don't have to stay that way because of Jesus. See, we preach a gospel that you can become a new creature, a cre new creation in Christ. Old things gone. The new Christ inside of us is life. And not some, we're off in the distance right now. This moment. We can welcome, and I do, don't you? The Lord in as the refiner within me. I welcome the refinement of God in me. I welcome the refiner himself, Jesus. I welcome the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in me. I welcome the purging. I welcome the pruning of the Father. I ask him to cut away every branch in me that's not bearing true fruit. Don't you? I will not allow any life to get to that branch that does not bear the fruit of Christ. I want it cut off and out of me. How about you? Can you feel it? The Lord's been pruning us. That's because he loves us. And it's a sign of his love. The Father prunes everyone. Right? Prune me, Lord, I welcome you. Prune me, Father, prune me. Prune me. Too much growth going on that's not of the Spirit of God. Prune me. Purge, I pray for the Spirit of Christ in judgment in my inner man and burning in my inner man so that the likeness of Christ's life may come forth more clearly and be demonstrated in testimony of life more clearly than ever before. And I pray that corporately for this body, there will be here, among other places in this area, but here as well, a corporate expression of the testimony of the Lord Jesus in purity. And let me say it this way. To the vessel who knows no mixture, his power will be given without measure. And it is a transforming power. It is his invitation. Now, I've seen some things two weeks ago or so. I talked to Drew about this just a moment ago. I didn't know anything until I got here. But the Lord encountered me about Drew. And uh, it was beautiful, and I want to just share it so you can have a recording of it, Drew. So uh, in the encounter, the Lord uh, was uh, like in the book of Esther, talking like Mordecai to you. And I saw, uh, because of the words of the Lord, for such a time as this, out of Mordecai to you, the scepter of the king was held right out to you, and I watched it. And the Lord bid you come. Now, the funny thing is, I, you've been doing this, but what I'm trying to describe, if you can understand it, is a dimension of invitation to you unlike any other time in your life, Drew. It was beautiful. I wept. God help me now, but I wept when I saw it. I know the rarity of it. <laughs> it was beautiful, Drew. He extended the scepter to you. And I watched as Psalm 27 and Philippians chapter 3 played itself out in your life. The Lord whom you seek came in a way inside of you. I'm going to use this old word, but you became a prototype of what a man can be when the glory of God is seen upon him. And if I said it this way to you, brother, 
I don't know all the physical things. I just heard about them when I got here, so I don't want to address any of it. But I can say the conclusion of the matter to you with confidence. The conclusion of the matter will be a place of glory of the Lord in you that will shine undiminished in this time. I want to pray for you and Bethany. Bethany, it's not that you don't have a part in this. You do. Mainly by beating him down and stealing his gift. No, no. <laughs> Will y'all please stand? If you can stand, just stand just a second. I want to pray for you. The Lord, I can say the Lord's got this. You already know that. But it's what's hidden in this, this invitation. There was a transition involved in it. I don't know the depths of the transition. It wasn't locational as far as away from here. But it involved money. It involved finances that involved things, a door that opened to you that has been hidden, at least how I saw it, but is going to open to you. And it's like this. This doesn't always happen because you have stayed in the testimony and is, you're letting the Lord fulfill his will in you. He can easily give back what was taken. Easily, brother. I don't know what I'm saying because I don't know what's going on, but I'm if you cry, I'm, I'm a goner. <laughs> I can't help it. God, I thank you for Drew and Bethany. I thank you for them. They have stood the test and not been found wanting. They have suffered well in the fiery ordeal, and they have not lost their faith. And now, Lord, shine, Jesus, shine. In the midst of this congregation, shine an undiminished light in life through them, Lord, for they are your servants. And I'm going to quote Malachi 3 right over here. You are mine, says the Lord, and no one else's. And this thing is going to end in the glory of God. That's how it ends. That's the conclusion of the matter is the glory of the Lord. There is an open door that the Lord is setting before you. That open door includes finances. There's entrepreneurialism in it. But the Lord will open that door to you in his timing. You will step through it in the right timing, and you will find Jehovah Jireh to you again in a powerful way. The enemy will not have the final word. The Lord has the final word. And we say, be it done unto your precious ones now, Lord, according to your will, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I hope you're encouraged by that. I had to cry with you. <laughs> weep with those who weep, rejoice with those who rejoice, and we're doing both right now. And isn't he beautiful? He is beautiful. I thank you, Lord, for that. But they're a sign to this congregation. They didn't choose to be. They were chosen to be. Bethany means house of bread, does it not? There's a message within the message. What bread would that be? Even the bread of suffering becomes the best bread when the Lord's in it. Is that not true, Bethany? The best. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were from there. You know that, right? Anyway, I ask you, Lord, with this congregation, you set signs in the midst of a congregation. Everybody can see the flesh shining, but you're setting a real sign here in Drew and Bethany. The sign of the cross, the sign of the Via Della Rosa, the way of suffering. But the end result of it is life abundantly. And so, Lord, we take to heart the sign you give to us. That, Lord, we refuse, as they have refused, to shrink back. 
We refuse to be embittered. We refuse to doubt. And though the battles rage in all these areas, we love you, Lord. And though you slay us, yet we will serve you. So say we all. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Awesome. So we're going to end the online portion right now. And then, um, wow, 